One, two, mic check, one, two. Yo, I'm not getting any text. I was just seeing if you knew Fairlay's people yet. Yeah. Everything is just sticking. I got Purdue's. But. Two, four, eleven, twenty-one. Got it. Thank you. Yep, bye. Thank you, gentlemen. Go ahead and find your name tag and take a seat. All right, before we get started, a few quick reminders, please, as a courtesy to the gentleman up here on the stage and your fellow media members, silent those cell phones now. Please provide your name and media affiliation with each question you ask. And uh, no video recording in this room whatsoever with your phone, so please put those away. And with that, Coach Anderson, opening remarks, please. Yeah, what a night. Um, incredible, incredible win for us, incredible win for our program, our school. Um, hard to put into words right now. Honestly, it's really, it's really hard to even... even uh, even, it just just happened, right? But uh, you know, I think uh, an unbelievable credit to Purdue. Uh, I mean, that's a that's a Big Ten powerhouse. What what, what they do there is incredible. I, and I kind of felt bad the last couple of days about what I said in the locker room because it was almost like a slight towards Purdue. I have an unbelievable respect for Purdue. I, I think Purdue's tr tremendous um, tremendous respect, and and for us to beat them tonight in this environment was just an incredible win for us. I'm so proud of the guys, what we've done, what we've accomplished so far, and um, just a, you know an, an incredible night. I thought I thought the style. Our style is hard to play against. I'm sure the Big Ten teams don't press as much. I mean, our, our quickness, our speed. Um, you know, my dad was a, my dad was a big boxing fan. Sty styles make fights, and our style I thought uh, hurt hurt them a little bit. I thought that the, the press, the up tempo, the speed, the quickness, and our guys just I mean they defended their tails off and and, and play great. So unbelievable win. We're, we're very happy to survive in advance and move on.
Thank you, Coach. We'll start with questions for student athletes first, please. Raise your hand. We'll get you a microphone and make sure you wait for the mic before you ask your question. First, down here in the front. This is for Dimitri um, over here. Uh, Mark Canizaro for the New York Post. Um, Coach Tobin yesterday talked about um, hanging around. And uh, you, you guys played what he called a pretty much of a blueprint game in the play-in game the other day. How close to the blueprint was today? And uh, at what point did you feel like you know they realized you weren't going away? No, well, first off, we, we knew coming to this game how good Purdue was. Um, you know, we didn't, we, we knew how good Purdue was. Um, so, like I said, every game, we've been on this video every year. So, you know, our job is coming to the game and it's just, just, like I said, throw a punch. You know, we knew they was going to throw multiple punches. Just throw, throw a punch back. You know, we knew what type of game this was. And, um, man, it, it, was, it was a game of runs. And we showed why we, should, we showed why we belong here. So, you know, cre credit to Purdue. But, you know, we did what we had to do and now we on to the next one. Here in the front right. Sean, Kevin Fielder from Owls 24-7. You're a Columbus guy. You know, you were born in Columbus. To do this in your hometown, what does that mean for you? And, you know, to w make history in your hometown? Man, I can't even explain it, man. I'm still on shock right now. I can't believe what we just did, man. It's crazy. But, man, it feels, it feels amazing, man, because I ain't, I ain't played home in a while. I ain't just going to be here again. You know, and Kevin was with me, too. It was so much. It's something that happened. Down in front with Rob. Yeah, Rob Aller, Columbus Dispatch. How much do you think it helped you just being home, having family around here, the whole thing? It felt great because my, my support system was just amazing. Family, friends, fans, and fans are they're great, man. They travel all these lanes just to watch you, watch you win this tournament, so it felt great. So it just, that's, it. that's all I know because I got, like I said, great support system, so. How much family, how many family would you say you had here? I couldn't even count them today. There ain't no number for today. <laughs> oh, no. A lot, though. Right there behind you. Uh, go to you, Sean, again. Just, just being home, at what point did you guys feel nationwide kind of turn today? At what point were you like, okay, they want, they're behind us? Um, I don't think, I don't think we, we never felt like that because Coach Lee said all the time, don't blink, don't blink. So even they, they made their run, they made our run back because we didn't blink. So it was back playing mentality, back playing mentality. So as long as we keep our head on the back playing mentality, then I feel like we did what we, what we did. Down here in front, reminder to name and media affiliation, please. Jack Ebling, the drive with Jack and press pass for any of the players. Had you been on the court with anyone close to the size of Zach Eady, and could you either tell there was a moment where they started to think, man, we're in for a battle, or you guys, your confidence soared and you said, we can do this? Cameron, you want to handle that one? You guarded him quite a bit. Um, it was a little bit of both. Um, it was hard guarding him. It was trying to get a rebound, trying to box him out, trying to get in front of him. But uh, our effort and everything changed that we played today, so that definitely helped. Right down here in front. Grant, Kevin Fielder from Owls 24-7. Did you at any point hear the crowd ch chant FDU's name as much as they did late in that game? Um, to, begin this, to begin the second half, we were so locked in, we couldn't hear it. Um, you know, it was really, really noisy in there. But when it got towards the end, we felt comfortable uh, where we were at. We, we heard the chants, and you know that just made us want to go harder. Here in the back with the coat. Mike Petralia, CLNS Media, Cincinnati. Uh, this question's for you, Grant. You did a lot of different things today, scoring, rebounding, assists, and the steals. Did you figure coming in that you'd have to do a little bit of everything in this type of environment to get a win over a number one seed? Yeah, of course. Uh, we had Karim Tweedy, uh, Ansley Almanor working very, very hard on the, on the boards. Um, the least I could do being at Mazas and using my athletic ability to come down there and help um, as much as I can to you know, keep those guys comfortable down there uh, out of foul trouble and um, making, sure, making sure we got extra possessions. We know they're a good team. I uh, knew they would, he would score, but you know, just getting those extra possessions, every possession counts. So. Last question for the student athletes. 
Sam Sprunger, uh, Big Ten Plus 4 ASAP Network. This is for all you guys. Talk about your coach a little bit. How much do you feed off of his energy, and how does that translate to the court where you're taking that energy he gives you and putting it into the game there? His energy is great. We feed off his energy. We start such a practice, the locker room, before we come out to the game. His energy is great for us. We believe in every player. Never, never doubt that anybody. You know, so everybody comes to the court with the same energy, their skill set, and what they do is a matter of energy. We believe in everybody. Gentlemen, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Coach, stick around, please. Proud of you, buddy. Good job. Good job. Questions for Coach Anderson, right here. <laughs> Tobin, Bob Kravitz with The Athletic in Indianapolis. What, I mean, you, you said what you said after the first four game. Did you really mean it, or was it? I mean, or what did you see in Purdue that made you and your assistants think, you know what, this team's beatable? I'm not sure how much I I meant it, you know. I'm, I, 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 but I wanted our guys to, to believe, you know, right? I mean, as a coach or a leader, you got to try to try to get them to to believe in what we're doing, how we're doing it. So if I walk in there and say, hey, you know, I don't say anything. Now I would have preferred there was not a camera in there. That would, that's it was a it was a right message, wrong audience. That's what I would say. I mean, was, I, I, was, I would have said that with no camera in there, so I didn't want to get, I didn't mean to get Purdue upset, so that was not the idea at all. But that was got to be the message. Like, we're, we're trying to win the next game. Like, we're, we just can't be happy to be here. Um, and the guy's got to believe. And, I'm, you know, listen, I, you see these guys, like Dimitri Roberts from Mount Vernon. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not necessarily sure I have to tell him that. I think he believes no matter what. He believes he's the best player out there, and Grant's the same way too. And Sean's starting to come into his own, that they believe they're, 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 they should be out there. And um, just fun to fun to be around these guys, but yeah, I I I, um, I, de I definitely want to get that across to him. Let's like, we're here we're here to you know we're we're a little irritated. I mean we have a chip on our, we all have a chip on our shoulder. People say we shouldn't be here, we shouldn't be in the tournament, all like all that kind of stuff. We have to listen to and and um, we want to prove we belong. And I think people see now that we do belong. And, and I, here's the thing: we're getting better too. Like we we played we played really well these last two games, and I, that's a, a credit to our guys. Like we are definitely getting better, and that's a um, exciting thing. Right down here in front. Tobin, uh, congratulations. Thanks, Mark. Do you, uh, can you speak to the job he did on Edie? Uh, I mean, he had numbers, but despite those numbers, it looked like you did everything you wanted to do against him. We talked about before the game, and their wins and their losses, he averages the same amount of points. I think he was averaging like 24 on their wins and 20, 23 in their losses, right? But if you look at their wins and losses, it's the other guys around him in their losses, those guys don't play well. In their wins, those guys play well. So we knew he's going to – I mean, what he scored tonight? I, I can't even uh, – he got 21, right? So he still scored some points. We made him uncomfortable, but we did a great job on everybody else. And that was kind of the idea. Like, he's going to score some points. He's going to make some shots. We're going to make him guard. We're going to make him run. I thought they got tired. You know, we, we said, well, sometimes you just say it to your team just to say it to your team that, that they're tired. But they looked a little tired in the first half, and our guys saw that. And that, I think it gave us a little bit of confidence. But they did a great – I mean, our post guys, Cam Tweedy, what's he, 6'5", 6'6", Anzi, 6'5", 6'6", were the shortest team in the, in the country. But we, we made him uncomfortable. And this, the, the, this, the things he made were not easy baskets. And I don't, I don't think he ever felt terribly comfortable. And that just was a great team effort. We, we really sank in the paint. We, we, we went off certain shooters. We're like, let's make them make threes. And um, – but not like, give them threes, make them make threes. So it just an unbelievable team effort. That just they were so our guys were so locked in. You know that's, you know, it'd be very easy to come here and just say, hey, nice win the other day, and let's just, especially when you get up, you're up ahead at halftime. Okay, we're up at halftime. This feels good. Like we just kept coming, you know. And they got up by five at one point, and we could have gone away. We definitely could have gone away. It looked a little bit like we're on the edge. The crowd was going crazy, and we kept fighting back. So that's 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 character. Next year in the red shirt. Daniel Jakes with uh, Student Union Sports. Uh, Coach, I mean, you threw kind of a little bit of everything at Purdue. You full, full court press, 3-2. Uh, you had two sets of hands on Zach E.D. all game. Yep. Um, I mean, how, how do you take this win and carry that momentum into uh, Sunday? Yeah, I mean, we have to be – obviously, we're – Purdue's – if we play Purdue, it's like that. It's like that miracle speech in hockey, right? I, I watch. I watch that. Everybody's sending me clips of hockey speeches and Hoosier speeches and all that kind of stuff all, all day long, right? And um, if we played them a hundred times, they probably beat us ninety-nine times, right? If we played them a hundred times, they probably we have one win. But tonight's the one 
We played well. We had, to, we had to be unique. We had to be unorthodox. We had to uh, make it tough on them, you know, just be different. And so I think a win like that's great going to the next round. I mean, every time you win, I mean, what's the, the alternatives are going home. So I think it helps our confidence, helps our um, belief in what we're doing, and we'll get prepared for, for uh, Sunday. I mean, I got to go do some laundry, but I will get prepared for Sunday. <laughs> I, mean, I have belief, but I'm not sure I have that much belief. I got to go, do some laundry. Michael. Michael Cohen from Fox Sports. Uh, Tobin, one of the storylines surrounding Purdue this year was whether or not their freshman guards could do it in the NCAA tournament. I know you guys press anyway, but how eager were you to kind of put them under pressure and see how they would react in their first tournament game? Yeah, well, first of all, we have two great fifth-year senior guards. I have two, Dimitri, Dimitri and Grant, like, you know, they're, they were Division II in, in guards for, the, for four years, but they've won a lot. Their postseason record keeps on getting better. They're used to, they're not used to this, you know, but they're used to big games. And I think it's hard for freshmen to play against two fifth-year seniors who know how to play, who know how to win. Um, our press is what we do. It's hard to prepare for pressure, how we press in two days or three days. I mean, we just won on – you know, two nights ago, they had 48 hours. I'm sure they prepared a little bit, but we, that's, we played that way all the time. So our press was able to cause them a lot of problems, and, and, and that's what we do. You can't just start pressing all of a sudden and then be good at it. We've had to press the whole year long, and, it's, and we, we still made some mistakes tonight. We, 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 did, we did some, 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 some things we can correct for, for Sunday, but I thought we sped them up. We made them play fast, and those, those two freshman guards are going to be terrific. They're going to be terrific players, but, you know, I think having two fifth-year seniors who've combined for 3,500 points and one – one, I don't know how many NCAA games now. That's, that's, I think that was, we had the advantage there, obviously, I, I think. And that puts us out of time. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. We'll Great. see you Thanks, tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Before we get started, we'll have a couple quick reminders. Please turn off your cell phones at this time. Also, please provide your name and media affiliation with each question you ask. And there is no video recording in this room on your phone or handheld camera. With that, Coach Painter, opening remarks. Yeah, I um, want to congratulate Farley Dickinson um, on the win. Thought they played excellent. Um, what they were trying to do and what we watched on film is exactly what they did. Um, always trying to, to spread people out, use their quickness, use their skill. And uh, obviously they press and, and come after you, but um, a lot of that semantics. I, I just thought they played really hard and did a lot of really good things. And you know whether it's the turnovers where it was us or it was them, it was still I thought a well played game on on, on their end of things. And um, it's hard. It's it's a really hard thing. We've worked very hard and done things the right way in our program. And. I think six straight years we've been a top five seed 
And that's all you try to do is you just try to fight to get in the best position possible. And now we get in the best position possible and this happens. And um, obviously it hurts, it, it, it hurts bad. And, uh, but with that being said, I don't want to take anything away from them. They earned it. They played better than we did. They coached better than we did. And uh, we got to sit in it. We got to face it. We got to deal with it. And we got to come back stronger. But um, th th that'll take some time. Uh, that'll take some time. These guys have been fabulous. Our players, it's, it's a joy to, to be around them. Um, these guys all love it. They work hard. They're good dudes. Um, we don't have problems like a lot of other people have problems. We've worked our asses off to get the right people on our team. And uh, it's just unfortunate. It's really unfortunate. But with that being said, I want to congratulate Coach and um, all they've been able to do. He's a grinder, D2 guy, won 80% of his games there, brought some guys with him, and um, has done a really good job here in a short amount of time. And, you know, tip of the hat to him and his program and his players because I thought they were fabulous. With that, we'll open up for uh, questions for players. Please raise your hand. We'll get your microphone and identify yourself before you ask the question, please. Bob here in front. This is Zach, Bob Kravitz with The Athletic. What did they do to make things uncomfortable for you, or did, did you feel they made you uncomfortable? Um, just the way they played. They really limited my touches in the post. Um, <clears throat> You saw a lot of times they would have one dude guard me from behind and one dude basically sitting in my lap. Uh, they were full front in the entire game. Um, so it made, made it very hard to get catches. Uh, they had full front and they would sit somewhere underneath, uh, underneath the rim, um, which makes it very hard to, like I said, get catches and get into a flow and get into a rhythm. Um, uh, credit to them, they had a great game plan coming in and um, they executed it very well. Right here in front. Fletcher, hey, Greg Doyle from the Indy Star. Um, knowing what they were doing to Zach and how many three-pointers you guys shot, you guys must have known it was going to come to that. What, what is that feeling like as the game's unfolding and you realize he's not going to be the one that's going to win it tonight? You're going to have to make some threes. Yeah, when teams decide to go out and do that defensively, it, uh, you just got to step up and knock down a shot. Um, obviously, 526 isn't what we expected. It's not what we've worked for. It's not product of the work we've put in. But um, when the, they they uh, crash in the paint so hard and don't let us throw it in or over top, and um, it's just uh, my eyes open wide up, ready to knock down a shot. But uh, then it then it come to me every time, and then we just didn't knock down shots. Greg again. Yeah, me again. Zach. Um, Zach. I've been right here before asking this question, and it sucks. But we're not going to get you for a long, long time. And you're the national player of the year. Do you know are you coming back next year? I have no opinion on that right now. Uh, I'll make my decision going forward. Over here on the right. Mike Petralia, CLNS Media, Cincinnati. Um, Fletcher, for you, how uncomfortable did they make the game tonight from start to finish? I mean, not really uncomfortable at all. I felt I felt good out there. Uh, their pressure was nothing we haven't seen before, but it uh, was constant. And um, really, when you're playing with guys coming from behind you the whole time, you gotta gotta have eyes in the back of your head a little bit. We had a few turnovers like that, but not too. We just didn't we just didn't play our game. I think uh, we got a little rattled. We were a little panicked early on, but. Uh, if you want to win a game like that, you can't be panicked. You got to go out there and let you know who's boss. Student athletes, thank you for your time. Free to go. Questions for Coach Painter? Bob? <coughs> Matt, how are you dealing with this? I mean, this is three years in a row against a double digit. Seed, right? Um, do you have any earthly clue why this has happened? I mean, you yeah. had great runs, but the last couple, right, right. Not so well, much. well, today, just you know, what we've tried to to form within our system in, in terms of recruiting is to have the balance of, of a great, you know, great bigs with skill. And then obviously, you need know, to shoot five for twenty six. And this wasn't something for us that was just today. You know, we we had a couple stretches during the season. Um, you know, even in the Big Ten tournament, you know, our last game against, you know, Penn State, um, 
And it, it's frustrating. I think it kind of just mounted for us and it got worse at times just because I think we shot one out of rhythm, three in front of me, maybe another one. But like the game plan for people is, is not to like stay in there on him and then go contest. Like they, they, they stay in there on him and they don't even contest. So like we're taking wide open shots, um, you know, from some guys that, that can shoot the basketball. And, and that's kind of been the case for us, you know, the whole year. We've had stretches where we shot the ball well, then we had other stretches. It's that inconsistency. And I think that just kind of builds, you know, especially within individual games like this right here to where like now, like who really wants to step up and, and knock that shot down? You got to have three or four guys that want that. And, and it's really hard when, you know, you're not as confident and you've missed some wide open shots. So, um, you know, I thought the St. Peter's game, those guys really made it hard for Zach once he got it. And he had those turnovers in that game where here that wasn't the case. You know, when we could get it to him, you know, he, he could score the basketball. It was just after it just kept coming and we're just wide open and they're just not going to let us get it in there because, you know, why should they, right? You know, make those other guys uh, move it. But I, but I thought another key piece of the game was, you know, we had to have more cracks at it. You know, have, you know shooting that way is one thing, but then having 16 turnovers um, and, you know, about half of those was just us, you know, kind of passing and catching, being able to make fundamental plays. And uh, we overdid some things, had a couple charging calls. And um, you, you got to be able, when people press you like that, you got to go get layups. You got to go get wide open shots. And then after you start struggling shooting, you got to go get layups. Like that's just, that's so important for us right there. We had some decision making in there that, um, you know, just wasn't very good. And, and it just kind of allowed them to linger and hang in the game right there, even though neither one of us was taking a lead and pushing the game out. And uh, that was really hard, you know, because now we're having empty possessions with no shots. You know, at least when we take a shot and it's wide open and we miss, we got a chance to rebound it. We got a chance to set our defense. But if you're turning that basketball over right there, now you're playing in defensive transition. You're not giving yourself a chance to rebound. You're not giving your chance to score, obviously. Hey, Coach. Sam Sprunger, uh, Big Ten Plus 4 ASAP Network. What do you tell the team after such a successful year, winning the regular season, right. winning, the, winning the tournament in the Big right. Ten, and then getting upset like this? What right. do you tell them at the end? Yeah. You, um, there's nothing you can say that's going to change it, right? I mean, they're just, I mean, it stinks. They outplayed us. They outcoached us. I think that's the one thing as a coach that you always face it and you know, you'll get ridiculed, you'll get shamed, you'll get whatever. It's, it's basketball. You know, you got to get better. You got to keep fighting to get yourself in this position and then be better. And, um, you know, that's what we have to do. But just told them that I was proud of them. You know, you win the league, you win your tournament, you fight to get in this position. We haven't been in this position as a one seed in a long time. And we get here and then we don't take advantage of that opportunity. But um, they're good guys. They work hard, you know, it, it stings. You know, you can get a lot of different people that look at it a lot of different ways, but when you're the one that's actually playing and coaching and you, the one, you're the one that invested that time, it's, it's really hard to take. But like I said, we're the ones that got to sit in it. We're the ones that got to hopefully be better because of it. Last question for Coach Greg. Right here in front of you. Yeah, Matt, hey, uh, <clears throat> Greg Doyle from the Indy Star. When, when these do you think the team got worn down, the pressure, the shooting did get so much worse as the season went yeah. on? Even the Big Ten tournament, you won some games, you didn't yeah. play that well. Was that just the yeah. stress of being the hunted all year? Yeah. I, I don't, you know, you don't want to make excuses. I, I think the, the shooting, maybe. But, like, you know, I don't want to take anything away from Farley Dickinson. I thought they were great. They were special. And, uh, but look at their two leading scores. Like, it wasn't like some guy went off for 30. I mean, there's seven for 21 between them. You know, the next kid right there, Moore, he really had a good game, but he's still seven for 17. So it wasn't one of those games where, like, you know, they were seven for 23 from three. It was a grinder. You know, we had to be better at grinding that game out than they were, and we weren't. But I, I, when I look at it and I take a step back, you know, you out-rebound them by nine. They have nine turnovers. We have 16. That, that's where it kind of lies for us. We, we, we had a stretch there where we lost games in Big Ten play where we had 16, 17, 16 turnovers, if I'm, if I'm accurate. And that was, it was just too much for us. You know, if you're not going to shoot well and you're going to have high-level turnovers, you're going to put yourself in a, in, a, in a tough position. But I do think as a, as a person who played college basketball and struggled shooting myself, you know, you, you start to play that game within yourself. 
And you got to be confident and you got to step into things. So, did you have some? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. We're good. Uh, Matt, the last time this happened, obviously, the only other time it's happened where a one loss to a 16, that yes. team, Tony Bennett's team, Correct. came back and won the national championship. I know you're still processing all of what happened to me, right. but do you plan to address that with your team that, look, you know, the low point is tonight, but you can still next year build something big? Sure, you're going to talk about it, but it's going to be the work. You know, it, it's going to be the drive, the, the hurt. You know, it, it's got to, you know, it, it's got to sit with you, man. It, it's got to sit with you to get you to work harder, not talk about it. You don't need to talk about anything. You know, we got to work harder. People can say we have young guys or it doesn't matter. When you, when you step out there, it does not matter. You got to compete and be better than your opponent. And, um, you know, we're not going to give into it. I know that unless they move me, we're not going to give into it. So we're going to keep fighting and um, doing everything in our power to make our program better, to get right back here. And, and just play better. So, Coach, thank you for your time. You guys got anything? You're good? Actually, I Go ahead. Go, Go ahead. Will you converse? Yes. <laughs> will, will you converse with uh, Zach about his future? In yeah, you know, he's a level-headed guy, man. He'll, he'll take the information in and, and, and make a decision and do what's best for him. So he's not somebody that he's, – he's pretty simple in things. But it's not me. You know, it's, he's got, his parents are great. Um, the people around him are great. Um, you know, he's, he's a good dude, man. He's, it's, it's too bad. He deserves better than this. He deserves better. Greg, did you have something else? You're good? You guys good? Cool. Thank you.